preview. Let me see it. Maybe once you connect it, pop right up. Probably dusty. Mike doesn't dust in here. Hmm. Okay. Oh well. We can share it in the page. Okay. Done. We're live? We are live. Oh, good morning. Let's give everybody a second. <coughs> Look, we got pretty good angles here, too. Yeah. Oops, I'm out of here. Can you go ahead and turn it? It wasn't, it didn't look very good. <laughs> it was cutting us off. Do you have a coffee? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome everyone to another edition of Coffee with the Trainer. This is 6.0. So we've been doing this for about six months now, and this is your holiday survival guide. I am joined by none other than Danielle Kepperling. She was on the show. She was actually the very first person to be on the show. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to just let her talk about what she has going on and the new things that are going on with her. And then we will talk about tips to help you survive the holidays. All right. Yeah. Hey. Uh, actually, so since uh, we've been together, I moved into a, a role, which is awesome for YOFIT and Exeter Fit. Uh, so I'm the Group X director. So anything Group X, uh, I guess you can roll those questions out to me and um, been teaching a lot of classes and getting to know all the instructors at uh, both locations really well we have a great team and uh, I'm really excited to move into that role and I feel like it's it's very fitting I still do personal training and I focus on nutrition and that hasn't I've just become more busy and and learning how to uh, manage my time <laughs> and my priorities so my priorities right now is group training so everything group fitness, whether it's boot camp classes, you'll catch me on Saturdays teaching with John now, and um, yeah, it's just rolling out really nice, so a lot of good classes coming your way. Yeah, we've been hearing a lot of good things about the kettlebell classes and things like mm -hmm. that from some of the clients, so yeah, come check it out. So for those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. Basically, Coffee with the Trainer, you can ask us any questions. This is the Holiday Survival Guide edition, but you can ask us any questions and we'll try and get to them on the show. We have a great show lined up for you today, so we'll just dive right into the questions. Danielle might answer some of them, I might answer some of them, and if you need further clarification, just ask some questions in your little chat boxes there. You have questions, just type them up and we'll, we'll get them answered for you. All right, sounds good. So, during the holidays, how do you balance getting everything done while raising children? This one applies mainly to you. <laughs> um, well... You just need to learn how to time management, and that's actually, I'm, I don't perfect that. You can ask my husband. I don't do that very well. Um, however, I know that what my priorities are. During Christmas time, it's making sure I have time for my family and, you know, friends and work and all that, that stuff that has to get done. Um, so when Christmas shopping and holiday parties and making dinner for other people, they, that's thrown into the mix, I have to step back. And that might be something that if I typically go do something with friends on a Thursday night, that gets on the back burner. I rearrange my schedule. So it's prioritizing um, what's most important and not losing that. So I don't really want to put my family last because that's... That needs to come first all the time um, so it's that's difficult but it's once you know okay no matter what comes into my on my plate as long as I'm, I'm meeting this this and this and I'm making my family happy and um, friends and people that mean a lot to me and, and getting my work in and my workout and you can't put yourself last you might have to move yourself down so my workouts usually they're my priority that might go to like five instead of three during the holidays but I still make sure I have time for myself and get it in yeah and I, I gotta say I have to commend her personally because I mean if you come into Y Mystic Fitness right now it's very very well decorated and <laughs> that was all her she did here Exeter Fitness no actually the, there's girls at the front desk who, okay. and, yeah who took care of that but 
Um, yeah, it's okay over And here. you did the Barnstormers, you were helping with that, right? Yeah, the Barnstormers, if you're in Lancaster, go um, do their holiday, um, like their trees and the lights in the stadium. It, it happens all month long, and um, my my husband, his business, he's supporting a tree, and I we had to decorate it. <laughs> it's a candy cane, and so if you go by there, you get to vote on a tree. Um, yeah, so... A lot, of, a lot of decorating, and that's also right. My my house is last. My I got to decorate my house last. <laughs> is it finished now? <laughs> it's finished. Very nice. Yeah, it's finished. It takes a very long time to get all that stuff done, and you're just praying that all the uh, the lights work when you actually plug them in. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the second question we have is, how do I stick to a budget over the holidays? Um, I guess I'll take that one. Mm -hmm. Honestly, a budget shouldn't just be something for the holidays. It should be something you're doing all the time. You should really figure out what your necessities are and then make sure you're taking care of your investing, your savings, and all that other stuff first. Make sure you pay yourself first. And then you should set a budget based upon the people that you're buying for. So say, hey, this year I'm paying 50 bucks for my five family members for each person. So $250 goes in your budget. If you know you're going to be buying a larger item, gift, you probably should have been planning two or three months ago kind of budgeting along mm -hmm. the way for a new TV or a new car or anything like that. Yeah. And you should definitely not be buying puppies yeah. for Christmas. <laughs> That's not a great idea unless the person firmly commits to wanting to have a dog. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. That's funny. Um, but yeah, how do you stick to a budget? The same as you stick to a budget anytime. You figure out how much money's coming in and you figure out, you know, your necessities and you just kind of go from there. Um, and I think so you don't get yourself in trouble, set a dollar amount for each individual person to see that you're following your budget, you're not going outside of the parameters which you're setting. That way you're in control and you're not owing the credit card company 16 to 27% for the next six months. So, you yeah. have anything else on that? I remember, oh no, I was a kid, that my mom would put aside like X amount of dollars per paycheck and it started like January. So January all the way till December, so the whole year. Um, and that's I'm just kind of learning, relearning how to budget certain things. Um, I've always been pretty good with um, my own money and, and where, where, how far I can make it stretch. But uh, when you feel like you're in a comfortable position, that's when you tend to spend a little bit more. You feel like, oh, yeah, I have this, but... In reality, you really should be putting it aside. So if you can think that far ahead, or even putting five dollars aside a week, think about by the time Christmas comes, you have a good chunk of change. Not to say that you can't go over that if you feel like you know you need to, but yeah, just little by little, it's it's something that my mom always did growing up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, um, I've been reading two books recently: "Retired Inspired" by Chris Hogan and "The Money Makeover" by Dave Ramsey. So if you are in a financial bind and 2019 is going to be another one of these years where you're trying to make headway on your debt and things like that, maybe your college loans, your mortgages, your cars, your credit cards, anything like that, those are two great books to read. They basically help you with setting a budget and help you you know, work forward on your goals and making sure you're doing it the right way. You're starting with the higher interest rates and working your way down the smaller payments and working your way up. Things along those lines. If anybody ever wants to talk more in depth about that type of stuff, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about that because I love talking money and finances. It's one of my passions outside of fitness. Um, Were you supposed to be an accountant, maybe? Maybe. You know, the accounting part's not the fun part. I, yeah. I like the investing part of it. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, nice. and the planning for, you know, the long term and things like that. But yeah. Um, so check those out if you're looking into stuff like that. There's an app called, I'm going to probably get this wrong, I think it's Fudget is the app, and that's a free app for you to set a budget. Mm -hmm. So that's a very cool app to do that. And there's another one called Every Dollar, and those are both free. So if you don't have a budget, maybe now's the time to start looking at 2019 as the year that maybe you eliminate some debt and start living a little more free. All right. Uh, oh, wait, we have a question now. Wait, how do I, how do, I do it? Oh, I can't <laughs> read it. Hi Danielle, you're awesome. A Christmas fitness gift for me would be finally figuring out how to do that true. Oh, Feet off you? the ground, pull up. Help. Oh, oh help. <laughs> do a pull up. So how how would Nancy Maurer get better at doing pull ups? Um, honestly you want to start at the top. So 
um, when I started training and, and, and practicing pull-ups, and that's something that if you don't practice them, you lose them. So I haven't done them in a while, so we're going to see. I don't know how many I could do right now. Um, but when you're doing those pull-ups, you actually want to start up top. And so as you get yourself in that position at the top part, you're going to do your negative and lower yourself down little by little. And those muscles that you're activating um, kind of wake them up. So as you're doing your pull-up and you're focusing on those the negatives, you'll be very sore the next day. Um, and so jumping into that and then controlling it at the top, most people, they can get the start. And then they feel like they kind of get stuck in the middle. And then once they're assisted, then they can almost get themselves all the yep. way up. So it's that middle part that you really need to focus on. And doing negatives is something that really helped me learn how to do pull-ups. Um, assisted pull-ups, getting a, a large, thick band. And you can hook that on the top of your bar. You can put it in your knees or put, it, put your foot through it. And then that will kind of assist you. Um, you could probably do an assisted pull-up to failure. So I would do three sets of your negatives, maybe eight to ten, and then your last set, I would do assisted pull-ups, as many as you could do to burn out. And so you're activating those muscles there, and waking them up, and like kind of training your body of uh, and strengthening those weaker points on that pull-up. Absolutely, and I would also say maybe on a separate day from when you're trying to do the pull-ups, you know, work on a little grip strength, some uh, some farmer walks and some... Yeah, you know, absolutely. Basically just carrying some heavy dumbbells around the gym. You know, you can do plate pinches where you take two, two and a half pound weights and just kind of hold them together and just kind of walk around with those. You can do a little wrist curls, reverse wrist curls for your forearms. You know, because if you're hanging up there and maybe this is somebody that can actually do a bunch of pull-ups, you know, if your grip strength starts failing, you know, before you're actually fatigued in the back, mm -hmm. that could be a problem too. So you want to work on a little grip strength as well. Yeah. But yeah, that was, that was good. Great question. All right, so number three question that we have, how do I have fun but minimize the potential damage from the onslaught of cookies and candy everywhere at Christmas? This one, we can get into a lot of different things. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a, lot, a lot of damage, damage control. Um, I plan, so if I'm, if I, and this is just, I feel like this tip has been around forever, like if you already know that you're going out to a party or you know that you're going somewhere, eat lighter and plan your day. Um, just because you have a, an off night and you're eating and drinking more than you should, that doesn't mean that we're giving up the next day. Mm -hmm. And you and I know that we've, we've enjoyed and indulged and we're still where we are today. Um, I stray, I'm like a sweets. Oh, that's my way to sell cookies. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just learning how to bounce back from it and planning your day up into your, your party. And you know what I do? I'm gonna admit, I take a bite of a cookie and then I throw it away. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hey, I mean, savor it, just, savor that bite. Just, just take, just take a bite. And then, and then I just feel like that's all I need. And then I'm like, good. Then I can have um, four or five different cookies, and I just take a bite, and then I toss it. Yeah. That's that's what I do. I mean, that that really does make sense. Um, I my wife and I actually decided we're going to be pretty disciplined up until December 22nd because you know we had a beach trip recently and we had some fun there, and um, we're tracking our macros now. So we're doing like a 40 40 20 split, 40 percent protein, 40 percent uh, carbohydrates, 20 percent fat. Um, when you're doing that, you know, some people, they do if it fits your macros, they use that as an excuse to eat pizza all the time. But we use it more so to try and stay in align with, alignment with our goals. But if you do eat a cookie or two, as long as you know the macro profile and you put that into your calorie tracker or anything like that, for Danielle, it would be like one-eighth is, is what the serving size would be. So that would probably be like, you know, only 25, 30 calories. But if you're going to have one or two big cookies, that's all right. Just work them in, you know, to your macros. Um, so that's something you could definitely do too. Um, the My Fitness Pal app is pretty good for that. Um, but you know, come on, December twenty fourth, December twenty fifth. Don't worry about that stuff because you're not going to gain two, three pounds of fat in two days. Enjoy yourself on the actual holidays. You know, don't worry too much about you know the salt in the ham. Or yeah, the fat but what the, the kicker is that when you stray far from your diet and you just you feel full, much better. You feel bloated. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's usually be because of the, the sodium and the sugars and, and things like that. And you're going over your calorie allotment usually. Um, so yeah, you just kind of feel gross, which then you say, okay, well now I just ruined it. Mm -hmm. But it really doesn't last l longer than a day or so until you get back on the track. Yeah, and dandelion root extract is really good. It's a tea that you can make that really helps with the bloating. Like if you yeah. do, or digestive enzymes, probiotics. Yeah. I use that when I would compete. Yeah. Dandelion root. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and that's not going to hurt you or anything like that. It's something that you can just do a couple tea bags worth and, you know, be feeling a little bit better. Um, and drink water. That's the thing. So drink tip. Have a drink. Drink a full bottle of water. Have a drink. Drink a full bottle of water. So... One, you'll be running to the bathroom more. So you're not for sure, for um, sure. But, but yeah, no, and you know what though? And then you're you don't you're not left with a hangover the next day. Um, you're hydrated, and that's one of the things that when you stray from your diet, you're drinking crap, you're drinking soda, you're drinking drinks, uh, alcoholic drinks. Um, you're straying away from your diet, and then you realize I only had maybe a glass of water all day. So having water in between each drink tends to help with hydration. Yeah, definitely. That's another recommendation that I don't think we ever covered on this podcast, Facebook Live, whatever you want to call it. Um, you are supposed to be going to the bathroom every hour to hour and a half. If you're not, you're dehydrated. Now, I know that's hard with certain jobs and things like that, but honestly, it's good to get up from the desk every hour and a half anyway. Yeah. So if you can work that into your day, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, the only time that I deliberately dehydrate myself as if I'm driving to like North Carolina or something like that and I know I don't want to stop every two hours that's the only time any other time hour hour and a half something like that I drive my wife nuts but you know hey I'm hydrated so I'm doing well <laughs> um, Ben thanks for joining us while you're listening while you're in traffic that's kind of cool um, I know that Philly traffic can be a bear some days um, and Will just brought up a point and you know I'm not going to use this as a sales pitch or anything but he asked how he, where he can get some formal fitness training apparel. Well, we're actually releasing seven items in about two days. So it's going to be two different types of t-shirts, hoodies, all that stuff. So if you're interested in any formal fitness training apparel, that will be coming out. I think you probably meant the hats. Oh, the hats. No, I'm just kidding. The formal fitness training hats. <laughs> you know, that would be a good idea. <laughs> They'd have to have like a hydrator jug on the top or something so you can fill them like this. Straw. And straw and straw. elf style, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think besides that, you know, it's just minimizing the damage. It's also like you go to a party, make sure you're relatively full yeah. when you go. Right. So you're not starving. Because if yeah. you're starving, you're going to pick at whatever. Yeah. And, you know, I think we kind of covered most of it with that otherwise. Um, so I wanted to kind of put a little spotlight on Danielle because I know she does a lot of, you know, healthy baking and healthy cooking and mm. things like that. Um, and she also makes some pretty badass protein cookies, um, which haven't seen the light of day in a little while, but I just, they there, just there, might come back. There's a post that <laughs> that picture on Facebook was 10 years old, and someone commented on it, and it just blew up, and they're like, are you making them? I will. I will make them for the holiday season, so yep. you need some, get in touch with me. I remember them back from LA Fitness, yeah. and they are awesome. Shh, we don't speak of that Wow. I remember back at our first gym, how awesome it was. Yeah. But anyway, um, Danielle, do you have any nutritional swaps for cookies, cakes, ice cream, whatever kind of baked goods you're making for nutritional swaps, and how do I make them healthier? Uh, well, something that I, <clears throat> like uh, uh, ice cream that I made a long time ago when I started competing was uh, I would take frozen fruit. And it would usually be like tropical fruits, like mango. Uh, I think I bought it in a bag from like Sam's Club or something like that. Um, mango and pineapple, peach, and strawberry. And I would put it in my blender and add like a vanilla protein powder and add just enough water just so it would move, but not enough to make it into a smoothie. So it would be really, really thick. And I eat that with a spoon. You couldn't be able to drink it with a straw, and it, it it was like ice cream. It was like frozen yogurt. It was delicious. So that was uh, something I started a long time ago for like a frozen snack. Um, protein pudding is like a, mixing avocado, flaxseed oil, and um, like a chocolate protein powder. You blend it up, and that's delicious. I've made um, brownies with chickpeas. So chickpeas, 
<laughs> and my husband hates chickpeas, and I fed him brownies. I didn't tell him. Don't watch. <laughs> um, but it was, a ch- it was a chickpea brownie, and it was delicious. It was very fudgy. Um, so beans, actually, it's certain types of beans can be blended up and then, and then used, and it's a great protein source. Um, I always swap out olive oil for my cakes and my cookies instead of butter. You just have to watch. Now, I'm, I come from a... Bi- ah. <laughs> He's on. <laughs> um, I... You and I lost my train of thought. Um, I, I was a baker. Oh, I came from a baking background. So I, I have a little, uh, I guess... Um, a leg up. A leg up uh, from my parents. They, they had a bakery, but... But we we learned we it wasn't a healthy bakery, so I took that and then I just try to morph my food and my cooking into something healthy. So, uh, yeah, you can use applesauce, but use like natural things. Dates work really well with naturally sweet sweetening um, like cookies and cakes, blending them up. Um, apricots again that you kind of boil them down, they get chewy and sticky, and you know honey is a good one too. So uh, don't be afraid to get creative test things out and then use it on your family and friends to give you feedback um, yeah but coconut oil coconut oil and all you know extra virgin olive oil is the two main things that I use in place of butter and it works out very well so um, with with sugar you want to keep in mind you know your sucralose your aspartame or aspartame depending on how you pronounce it um, Stevia, monk fruit, and high fructose corn syrup, and then just regular sugar. So what do you recommend when people are trying to be healthier and they don't want a massive amount of sugar in their food? Like, what would they replace that with? Well, I'm not about replacing your sugar with fake sugar. Um, I just haven't, I never really did that. And so I find natural sources, so something that's going to give me a little bit more fiber, so like fruit. Um, but if I'm making if something calls for sugar, uh, n- every recipe that I've ever followed, um, it calls for maybe a cup of sugar. You are fine adding a half a cup of sugar. You just have to maybe scale back a little bit on your dry ingredients. Uh, Usually the recipes call for way more sugar than you need. So just by that, by cutting out half a cup of sugar or cutting back a quarter cup of sugar reduces the amount of sugar in in whatever you're making. Um, and then you could also replace that a little bit with a, a teaspoon of honey. Um, so I am not one to do fake sugars, but I do scale back. And I will use... Um, brown, light brown sugar, and it's a little bit sweeter, so you can use less of it, or coconut sugar. Okay. Instead of white sugar. Yeah, so no, no artificial sweeteners. Not, uh, no, not that I use. What are you doing? I have a question here. So, what advice would you give to someone who has a New Year's resolution um, trying to change their lives and lose weight? Um, I can't see the end of that on the screen we're currently at. Let me see. Oh, yeah. I don't know. So, Will, maybe if you just want to put that in, like, one or two lines so we can see the rest of it. It's just cutting off because of the camera angle. Well, what, I don't know if it... Hmm. Well, what advice would you give someone? So, a New Year's resolution to change their lives and lose weight. So, where where would they start? So, I would go. I would go back to you know kind of what I said a little while ago. Uh, first thing I would do before I you know stepped foot in the gym is I would spend a day or two figuring out how many calories you're eating on a regular basis, and you know if you're overeating or undereating. And there's a lot of different formulas out there to figure out. Um, how many macros you should have, but I try and simplify mine for my clients. Um, basically, so if you're 250 pounds and your goal is 220, I make it pretty simple. You do 220 grams of protein and carbohydrates as a starting point, and then you cut that in half and cut that in half again, and that's your fat. So that would be 55 grams of fat. That's a good starting point, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. And then you try and follow that for a week, and then if you're not losing weight, you might 
subtract 10 from protein, 10 from carbohydrates, give you 5 from fat, try that for another week. You should not be doing more than 5 or 6% adjustments every week. I think you get kind of redundant if you try and lose too much weight too fast, because if you do that, obviously your body starts secreting hormones, which prevents you from losing weight, cortisol, things along those lines. So it's really important to do it slow and steady. Yeah, it takes about three weeks for your body to realize that you've made a change in your diet and to adhere to something. So, so you even say two or three weeks. That's usually when people give up. Like, no, you're right there. Yeah. You're right there. At the three week, they're like, no, nope, it's not working. So give it like good three weeks. And usually when I do a program, I give, okay, try this for four weeks. Mm -hmm. And it gives a little buffer. And then you can make the switch into something else in another four weeks. But... Yeah, um, your formula works finding out where your BMR is. So BMR is your basal metabolic rate. So if you're doing nothing, so your basal metabolic rate is how many calories you need at rest. So if you were bedridden, just to digest food and just to breathe and have your organs work, that's uh, how many calories your body needs. I'm about 1,400. It changes with your weight. So if I'm at 200 pounds and I lose a lot of weight and now I'm at 120, my BMR is going to change. So you need to check that often as you lose weight. You say, what is BMR and how do I figure that out? You can actually go online um, and just type in Google uh, BMR calculator. And you can just put in information. It's going to ask you a couple questions, and it'll pull up your BMR calculator. So if you want help off of that number, then you reach out to somebody. You reach out to somebody and just... Uh, going into something blind is, is almost worse because it takes up your time, you get frustrated, you don't know how to help or wh what to do to, to fix whatever you're trying to do. Um, but yeah, so if you're gonna, if you want to start it on your own, I say start with your BMR because that's a healthy amount of calories that your body needs so you know that you need to get that. And then you can, and now if you start adding activity, then that BMR, you can increase it because you want to factor in your activity levels. Yeah, and as far as I'm concerned with activity levels, you don't necessarily need to eat back those calories, but if you want to, you can maybe eat back maybe 25% of those calories. So if you burn 500 calories in addition to your BMR, you know, maybe you can give yourself an extra 100 calories of food that day, but I wouldn't eat back all of the exercise calories. Yeah, so that's, yeah, it's that's... just finding that balance. If you like that, there's another challenge coming in January, you don't run it. So, more information on that. But you learn about your BMR. I feel like education. Education, it's not a secret. What we're doing is not a secret. It's I, out there. You know, yep. Both of us have worked our butts off to try to help people's lives. And ultimately, yes, we love our clients that we work with, but ultimately, we don't want you to rely on us forever. Not for it, everything, that's for no, sure. No, and it's, yeah. it's learning, and it's learning what works for your body, and... Um, and then just making that your lifestyle choice. Like I know some of your clients, that that's their, their lifestyle now has changed permanently. Mm -hmm. and, and the people I've worked with, it's, it's just like they say, oh, I can't imagine looking back. And it's, that's great. It's great for me to hear. That's our goal, I think, ultimately, is changing people's lives. Um, and 100%. they don't have to look back. Yeah, 100%. And then uh, he said about, you know, Will asked about, you know, living a healthy lifestyle as well. Um, something that's been kind of big lately that I've been, you know, really passionate about is, you know, now we're finally getting a little press that's saying weight training is as effective, if not more effective, than cardio for your overall health and well-being. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, you know, most of us have been, you know, training as weightlifting is a majority of what we do. We do a little bit of cardio and you know nutrition obviously has to be on point but weight training is one of those biggest things that if you're starting out I, I, I don't really like when I see people come in and the first thing they do is walk on a treadmill for a half hour, ride a bike for a half hour and then they leave. I'd rather see them you know learn eight to ten exercises that they can do three days a week and then excel from there yeah. and you know that's something that we do I mean you, you see us with most of our clients like you know, two to three days a week, and they do challenges with us and group training and things like that. But we also do write programs and get together to teach people how to use equipment. So did, if you're, did you know? Uh, you know. Did you know <laughs> <laughs> that when you jump on uh, cardio equipment, your body takes longer to wake up and realize that you're doing cardio. So if you were to do, if you if you're like, I have to do cardio, do weight training first. By the time you are done your weight training session, jump on a piece of cardio equipment or whatever you're doing. And your body's already like revved up and ready to go. So when you 
go. You're, it's not going to take 10 minutes, 15 minutes to realize that your body is working out. Yeah. So it's more effective that way. And you're burning through some of that protein and glycogen, carbohydrates, while you're lifting weights. So then what's left for your body to burn? Yeah. Mostly fat. Yeah. After your workout. So that's another question people ask all the time. Before or after workout, should I do my cardio? Well, I think you should do it whenever you have the most energy. Yeah. But the most effective way to do it is post-workout. Yeah. Yeah. I always want to stay, make sure I have enough energy for my uh, weight training session. And then um, I like mixing up uh, my, my weights and adding some hit. So I may do some weights and then do some hit in with that. And then you could... You can end on you know steady state cardio, or you can end on a hit, um, which is high intensity interval training. So it's it's really I mean it's a it's I guess it's a that's my preference, mm-hmm. but um, but it it's, it can work for different people, um, and then other people might have a different preference, which is fine as long as you're getting the results. That's the major. That's the that's the major. That is the big thing. If you're not getting results, change something. Yep. Yeah, and you know, you don't have to do three hours of cardio at a time. There's Tabatas, which are four minutes. They're hell. Like, honestly, they're hell. So it's sprinting 20 seconds as hard as you can, jump off the side of the treadmill for 10 seconds. You repeat that eight times. That's four minutes. And that's a workout like most cardio you'd never imagine. Coming and walking on a treadmill for an hour, yeah. I would argue the four-minute Tabata is better for you yeah. in terms of burning fat. Um, right. The hit, you start with 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. And then you look back at the FIT principle, which is frequency, intensity, time, and type. And every week, you adjust one of those variables. So it might start with 30 seconds rest, decrease it to 15 seconds rest, decrease it to 10 seconds rest. And then you might increase your on interval from 30 seconds all the way up to two minutes. And just make sure you're getting better all the time. Yeah. Because that's the biggest advice I'd say for somebody starting a New Year's resolution. Yeah, yeah. Um, track your goals. Track, you know, track your, your food. Um, and, and if, if you're not sure, then just, just reach out for help. It's not a plug-in for any of us or, you know, wherever you are, but just guidance. So either a friend that you trust, a trainer that you, that you rely on, um, a coach, uh, you know, somebody who, who might have a, the inside to, to help you and motivate you. It's, it's worse doing something on your own um, than when you have people that are expecting you to show up at the gym or expecting you to have your meals planned out. Um, so it's that accountability is a huge piece of, of when things don't work and when you're ready to quit. So the accountability allows you maybe to go longer when you're ready to quit. Yeah, and, and Daniel has a challenge coming up in January, and James Spies and myself, we have a freezer fat off winter strike coming up. With those programs, you're actually getting nutritional help, you're getting cardio help, you're getting workouts to do on your own, and you're also getting group training where you can make new friends and things like that. And those come in at a much lower cost than private one-on-one personal training. So if you do need some guidance and you're out there, just remember we have some of those things coming up and they're a great starting point for somebody as well. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not just for the seasoned athlete and person that's yeah. been working out for a long time. So just remember that coming out and reach out to any one of us if you want more information. That was a subtle plug, but honestly, <laughs> you do need to start somewhere and, yeah. and I'd rather see you do it in a group setting or maybe you know, a few sessions here and there just to make sure you're doing it right. So we see people almost hurt themselves every single day in that gym, and it's scary. Yeah. It's terrifying. Um, we're kind of bouncing around here, but... Um, we do, like, um, so time-wise, we do maybe, like, one more of our questions. And then we can yeah. see if they have any, and yeah. then we can do a little bit of the top ten. Yeah. Um, should we do this one? Sure. All right. So... Everybody likes to indulge a little bit over the holidays. Not everybody drinks alcohol. Some people drink regular, you know, sodas and things like that, as Daniel mentioned earlier. But, you know, how do I have drinks without going overboard on calories um, from an alcohol standpoint, we'll just say, Mm -hmm. um, for the holidays? Uh, uh, I cut things in half by, so if I'm having a wine, I turn it into a wine spritzer. So now it's wine fill the rest of the glass up with, um, like, club soda. And that could cut out calories. So you wouldn't really want to do that with a beer, but you would choose maybe something lighter. Um, Or 
something with a higher alcohol content, so you only need one. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's a few because, ways of looking at that. Because yeah. if you choose something lighter, you might like be kicking it back like it's water. Yeah. So um, I'm not going to tell you how to live, but... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's just being smart about and choosing, like, being creative with your drinks. If you have, you know, if you have control over it, you were telling me about a drink that you found that was, oh, yeah. like, yeah, this is how you can make it for a party, or you would, you, if you're going to a place and you're not sure what they have there, food, what this goes for food and alcohol, offer to bring it. Offer to bring something, and it's something that you know that you made, that it's healthy, and the calories are low. That's what I always do. Yeah, so I was telling Daniel about, um, a Moscow mule, it's a peppermint mule. So it's Smirnoff peppermint vodka, which is no calorie or no carbohydrates or very, very, very low carbohydrates with the peppermint flavoring. Um, but you know, two ounces of that is about 120 calories. I combine that with diet ginger beer. Again, that's artificial sweeteners. I am okay with that. Not everybody is. Um, but when I'm drinking alcohol anyway, I'm just trying to think, hey, let's keep the calories as low as possible. Sometimes, so, you know, two ounces of the peppermint vodka with the Diet Gosling's ginger beer, and then a little bit of lime juice comes in at 120 calories. Two ounces of vodka, you know, you're not going to have more than three of those, you know, if, even if it's a long party, because yeah. that's a significant amount of alcohol and relatively low calories. Right, and you're and drinking water in between. Drinking water in between. And then, you know, from a beer standpoint, I kind of agree with Danielle. I mean, if you're going to drink a 10% beer, yeah, it's going to be 300 calories, but you're probably only going to need one or two. So just kind of figure that into your workouts for the week. If you know you're going to have a couple beers on the weekend, do a little extra cardio, lift a little bit harder, keep the carbohydrates a little lower daily leading up to the parties. Um, if you do want to have quite a few drinks, look at gozes and sours because they, they come in at like 4 to 6% usually and they're like 150 calories. So it's not a light beer, it's a beer that actually has flavor, mm -hmm. but it's lower in calories, yeah. and you can have a few of them, and it will be okay. Yeah. All right, we, oh, we got another question. Any ideas on supplements for more energy while we are running here and there shopping parties? Um, hmm. You know what? I, I don't know if you have coffee. <laughs> Lots of coffee. Um, I've learned to space... My so I, I'm a coffee drinker, but I've learned what helps me is to space that out, I guess. Um, and it's I'm not drinking tons of like extra coffee. I'm just I've learned. So what I did over the last um, three months was I cut out my pre-workout. I like to cycle on and off, and so I was on it for a while and training and did a show over the spring, and then was on it, and then I just felt like I wanted to wean off. So I would have before a uh, pre-workout, then I would wait, then have some of my coffee, and so I just felt like it was a lot. So I cut out my pre-workout, I don't need that anymore. Um, I might bring it back in, but I like to cycle it out. Um, and then I don't have my first cup of coffee usually till like eight or nine. So that I feel like it just pushes me not to rely on that coffee five o'clock in the morning or six o'clock or whenever, and I'm getting my kids ready for school and I purposely just hold off. And so, you know, I'm having this is my first cup of coffee, and it was, you know, I started at like 9.30. So that, I felt like, gives me more energy that I'm not drained and feel like I don't need to have cup after cup after cup. But supplement-wise, I uh, make sure that I have all my aminos and, and vitamin Bs, yeah. and I just I feel usually energized. So if I know that I'm lacking somewhere in my diet, then I, I can tell that I'm... I'm dragging a little bit. So if my diet's not on point, that affects my energy. Yeah, I mean, so outside of your, your, your B12 and, and maybe coffee, or if you do want to go the pre-workout route, you know, maybe you can do half a scoop of pre-workout and sip it for a couple hours. I mean, I've done that in the past. Um, but, you know, digestive enzymes is something that you can kind of look at too. If you're struggling with energy and you know you're eating fairly well, Digestive enzyme will at least make the food that you're consuming a little more readily available, making sure your body's processing it mm -hmm. the way it's intended to. Um, but yeah, nothing major. No, nothing and if you're major. skipping meals too, like shopping and stuff, it's, I'm guilty of it. Of, oh, yeah. Especially, you know, that one. I'm like, I have to run this person here and get this and drop off this. 
I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't eat. So I always keep a protein bar, like a backup bar in my bag. If I take it out, I make sure I replenish it. So never go more than four hours without eating because your energy levels, they're crashing. Um, but yeah, so have something always readily available in your car, in your bag, or something that's always with you. Always take your water. That's like my go-to. My, my girls sure. are learning, like, they're like, I have my water. In the, like, don't leave the house without your water and an emergency snack. Yeah, no, it's a good idea, for sure. Um, so, for, you're welcome, Hello. Laura. So, we're kind of running out of time here a little bit. So, if you guys have any questions, put them up now. Um, we're going to run, I'm going to run through a quick top 10 tips to help you survive the holidays. They're not necessarily in a particular order, but, you know, 10 to 1. Yeah. I decided just to give you guys some quick tips. Um, so, number 10 Stick to compound movements in the gym, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of time with the holidays, you know, your squats, your leg presses. Something that you're using your whole body to, to help lift. So, um, you know, a snatch, or you could do like a squat, and when you come up, you're into a shrug. So I'm just utilizing every aspect of my body to do those movements. So that's what a, a compound movement is. Yeah, and, and get, get the blood flow going to multiple muscles at once. Um, number nine, high intensity interval training post workout. We kind of talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe five to twenty minutes instead of you know forty five minutes walking on a treadmill type of thing. That's pretty self explanatory. Yeah, hit you get in and out, and you can be done in you know tops twenty minutes and, and know that you did a good workout. Absolutely. Uh, number eight, vegetables and protein at each meal. I mean, that's the bodybuilder life lifestyle right there. You know, make sure if you're having three to five meals a day, there's some type of vegetable and protein at each one. Mm -hmm. um, number seven, three quarters to one gallon of water per day. We've talked about that a lot today. Yeah. Water, real quick, water, water. Real quick, if you're, if you're active, um, you could drink every hundred pounds should be a half a gallon of water. So I'm at like three quarters of a gallon that I know that I should be drinking every day. That does not count. Coffee or booze. I don't count that. The water. <laughs> yep. Um, number six. This one is very, very tough for people, but I've had clients that actually have fixed their sleep and started losing weight just mm -hmm. from fixing their sleep because the cortisol is less. So sleep seven to nine hours per night. Right. And try and eliminate distractions 30 minutes to an hour before bed. Turn the TV off, turn the phone off, or at least flip it upside down and just stay away from it because that kind of, the blue light really screws with your sleep. Yeah, and as, though, as you age and as you're older, like so someone who's like in high school, they're going to need more. They're going to need the higher end. They're going to need more sleep. Someone who's older and maybe let's say 50s or 60s, they might actually be fine on six hours of sleep. So that that is uh, kind of to fine-tune what works for your body, you know, um, I know John, he's like up at 2.30 in the morning, but he's figured out that I need this amount of sleep, and that works for his body, and he's not tired during the day, and he has the energy to go, he's always going, 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 and so do you know, a little experiment, set your alarm, and set it for, I think he did like set it for 8 hours, then he went back to 7, yeah. then he went back, and it, he, he fine tuned it, and, and you can always adjust it, but find that what works for you right now and just like our bodies always change your body your requirements with sleep may change yep. over time absolutely yeah john is a cyborg <laughs> I, I am very impressed by the fact that he can get by on five hours of sleep but he does i mean he and by choice though yeah. by choice and he has arguably more energy than any of us <laughs> maybe <laughs> just choice. john is the man yeah, yeah. um so number five Make lists and set priorities daily. If you go into the day without a plan, chances are you're going to have some things that don't get done. So that goes back to budgeting your time, yeah. budgeting your money, and set your priorities. Yeah. And as, as a mom, that's very important. She said that earlier with the question about how to get everything done with kids. Right. You just, yeah, you make it work. And this one applies to everybody. Um, park your car further away, farther away. Um, when you're at the mall, guess what? Your car is away from other cars. It's less likely to get dinged. Yeah, and it's not like parking next to people. Yeah, and, and you're not going to have the, the, you know, the mess of trying to back out of a space and things like that. Yeah. Um, and you're getting extra steps in. You know, it's one of the simplest things you can do. Yeah, like I, it's, it's funny, I don't know why or when I started doing this, probably because I think after I had kids, but I 
now run up the stairs two at a time. Always. Two at a time, like I'm running from somebody. But it's, I just, I don't know, I start doing that. So now, like any type of conditioning class or anything like, like stairs, I feel like I could just blow them away. And I don't get tired or fatigued. It's because I've trained my body to run like a bat out of hell up the stairs <laughs> for no reason. But I feel very strong on the steps. So that's just conditioning your body to do and that's my habit like I just I always do st uh, steps two at a time shout out to meatloaf bad out of hell <laughs> number um three foam roll or get a massage to manage stress uh this is the holiday edition so you know if you if you can find some time between now and Christmas foam rollers make great gifts for people yeah. anyone even if you don't it, someone who doesn't go to the gym yeah. Um, getting those kinks out and learning. Um, there's like videos and stuff, and we have um, a class here at YO called Active Recovery. Um, we're taking a break from that in December, but Active Recovery will be back. Uh, and it, so you learn how to foam roll, use bands, and all that other stuff to try to work out knots. Um, not only that is help with knots, but you know, rolling those muscles help. Um, <clears throat> with activate them too. Yeah, yeah. And, and the lactic acid, so you're not as sore. That's what research has shown, um, that if you, you know, foam roll after a heavy leg workout or major muscle groups in your back, is they tend not to be as sore. Yeah. And I even... I'm all about that. Like, if I can sit without crying, then I'm... <laughs> that's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, the massage, if you're already really tight, um, maybe get a deep tissue massage first and then start doing the foam rolling, just mm -hmm. to kind of loosen yourself up yeah. beforehand. Um... Number two goes back to the healthy lifestyle. Lift weights three to four days per week. Don't start with three to four days per week, but that should be the end game. You know, three to four days a week in the gym. You know, that should be your goal. Or at home. Or, or yeah. Or home. I mean, or you can do it at home too. Where, yeah, wherever. Just no. Just the the progress is huge. Is if I did two days this week, I can do three days. In a couple weeks, um, if I did it for 20 minutes, I can maybe push it to 25 minutes. If I use five pound weights, I'm at seven pound weights. So it's like you should see some type of progress somewhere, whether it's increasing the days, increasing the time, or increasing the weight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that leads right into the, the last one um, at home. Yeah. So if you only have 10 minutes, you can do body weight movements at home two to three days per week. Yeah. And then she said add some dumbbells in, things like that. Um, as you start getting used to what you're doing. Just be very, very careful when you're, you know, looking at, you know, programs that are designed for the entire country um, that you can buy online and things like that that might push you beyond where your current limits are. So if you're taking a class, I really don't want to mention any names, but if you're, if you're taking a class that you buy online or a program and it's a plyometric class, it's 45 minutes or something like that, and you haven't left the couch in three months, you shouldn't be doing plyometrics. So yeah. just use your head to little common sense right, right. As, as you're setting up your programming and things like that. And we're always here to help. So, yeah. you have anything else to bring in? I don't think so. I think we covered it. Yeah, no, I think this is a good session. A lot, um, I think it, was, it, it wasn't very narrow. It was very broad. So I think that uh, hopefully we helped a lot of people and, and gave little tidbits of information. Um, it'll go a long way past the holidays. Yeah, and I, I know we're in the midst of Hanukkah here, so happy Hanukkah to any of you that are listening that celebrate that, and Merry Christmas to everybody else, and we wish you guys all the best coming up in the holidays and the New Year, and uh, look for us to do this again at some point. You Excellent, know, yes. Danielle is one of my favorite guests. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank Appreciate you. you. <laughs> Thank you. Love you guys. Right, bye. Take care.